Dane. Hello, it's me. I have a book. Did I do an intro? I didn't do an intro. Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another monthly book haul. It is May and I have Plays Number 1 by Alan Bennett containing 40 years on, getting on, habeas corpus and enjoy. And I look forward to reading it. Dane reads. Alright, I don't know what I did with my tripod, so you're going to have to cope with being handheld. But, I got some uh, books today, so, well let's start off with this one. So I picked this up from, I've forgotten its name again, Chepstow. I picked this up from Chepstow Castle. This is Teach Your Cat Welsh by Anne Cakebread, featuring such terms as Mind Halog, It's Sunny, and Ah, oh, Dwayne de Garidi, uh, I love you. What's the time? Vint, what? Vinet or Gloch Ui. I'm not very good at Welsh, apparently. Do you want to play? Uiti Moin Shquariai. Yeah. The numbers were easier. Get out. Mass. So yes, I'm looking forward to teaching Biggie Welsh. I might actually do a video where I attempt to teach him Welsh. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then, in the various charity shops in Chepstow, I got Celia Haddon, 100 Ways for a Cat to Find Its Inner Kitten. Um, and these include such classics as, you do not have to accept abuse. Dogs may suffer until someone calls in the RSPCA or Humane Society. Dogs are dependent, we are independent. We cats take responsibility for ourselves and rehome ourselves away from abusers. I think the rest of it's a little bit more funny than that. A little bit funnier, should I say. Celia Haddon, she wrote another book about cats that I've read and I can't remember which one it was. Um, then I got Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw, which I may have already read, I can't remember, so I'm gonna find out. And then I got The Pure in Heart by Susan Hill, which is a Simon Sorella case. So I guess this is crime. Hmm, interesting, but it's published by Vintage. I mean, Susan Hill, I not really know her for her uh, ghost stories. But I'll, I'll, excuse me, but I'll give some crime a go. Hello, we're going freehand again, um, so I'll try not to keep this too long. But I have a stack of books from the charity shops today. So we have Paris Directions, and this is by Ruth Blackmore and James McConaughey. And obviously I am going to Paris soon, so I thought this would be a good little, you know, one to take with me. I'm going to try and read through it before I go, so I know as much about Paris as possible. There were some bars there, including ones that do live music, which is what I'm all about. I want to go see some live music. We have Carl Pilkington, Carlology, What I've Learned So Far. Friedrich Nietzsche, Why I Am So Wise, which is obviously the perfect book for me because I'm very wise. I'm wise enough to know that this is actually part of his last book, but I can't remember what it was called. Eke Homo, that's the one. Oh, actually, it's mostly Eke Homo and then some of Twilight of the Idols. Uh, we have R.L. Stein, The Scream of the Haunted Mask. This is one of the Horrorland books rather than the original series, but I did like the Haunted Mask books when I read those back in today. I've got uh, Ian Cam Braithwaite, My Sister the Serial Killer. Just heard a lot about this from Booktube. We have Teacher's Dead by Benjamin Zephaniah, so one of the authors I'm trying to work my way through. He's vegan, he might actually be at the vegan camp out, which I'm going to later this year, I'm not sure. We have The Devils of Luden uh, by Aldous Huxley. So Huxley is another author who I'm trying to read everything that he wrote. And weirdly, this did not, this one I hadn't got as marked as want to read or whatever on my list. Um, and that surprised me because I thought I'd marked all Aldous Huxley as want to read. That might actually be a bedtime book purely because of the size of the print. So we'll see. Pam Ayres, The Works. Arthur Miller, All My Sons. This looks like, is it about the war? Yeah, some, a memorial to a son who got lost in the war. And Arthur Miller wrote The Crucible, which I very much enjoyed about the Salem Witch Trials. And he was also married to Marilyn Monroe, I believe. And we have Black Swan Green by David Mitchell. Again, another author. I eventually want to read all of his stuff. And then The Killings at Kingfisher Hall by Sophie Hanna. So this is one of the new Agatha Christie mysteries. Um, and funnily enough, I was reading Sophie Hanna on my way here as well, because I'm currently on holiday, because uh, she's a very accomplished crime writer in her own right, as well as writing the official Agatha Christie sequels. 
And then I've got these two, which I'm going to be sending to Graham Sillers Reads Books here on BookTube, because I know he collects these. So these are the facsimile editions of Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie and The Murder at the Vicarage by Agatha Christie. I may one day actually collect the full range of these myself. I used to have a few of them, but I'm basically currently trying to downsize rather than upsize my book collection. So I'm basically selling off as much as I can on eBay to make space. And once I've downsized, then I'm probably gonna start buying like all of the really nice collector's editions of all of my favorite series, so the really nice Discworld ones and stuff. But that is for the future. Yo, uh, we went to the charity shops in Abergavenny today, and so I have some more books to talk to you about. So I have Micro by Michael Crichton and Richard Preston. And I also have, what's this, Five Patients by Michael Crichton. You know, slowly working my way through all the Michael Crichton books. Uh, we have True at First Light, Ernest Hemingway's final novel. Haven't even heard of this one. Um, but I've read a lot of Hemingway, and I enjoy Hemingway, so that'd be good. And I've got some more Susan Hill as well. I've got The Pure in Heart. So very good. I've just noticed a bit of a problem. So I've got The Pure in Heart. I got this the other day as well. Oops. Hello, I am very excited because today I have for you a copy of Kabumpo in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, founded and based upon the L. Frank Baum series. Unfortunately, this is a crappy public domain version, so it's um, somebody's just printed this super cheaply to try and make some money out of it. But hey ho, at least I've got it, and I'll be reading this as part of my buddy read with um, Joel Swagman. It's actually taken about three weeks for this to arrive um, which has probably put me behind schedule on the buddy read but Joel's also super behind anyway so we need I actually need to check in with it with him about that but yes either way looking forward to reading this bad boy all right guys just got the one book to show you today and that is Nick Littlehill's sleep the myth of eight hours the power of naps and the new plan to recharge your body and mind so this was recommended to me by Alex from the bookish report um, it's like non-fiction about how to better sleep this guy's worked with um, like a bunch of people from like the team GB cycling team to Alex Ferguson and Manchester United I did enjoy what he had to say and found it really interesting, but I don't know if I'm going to be putting any of it into practice. I think I'm just too set in my ways. But overall, it was it was like a middle of the road. Oh, actually, I'm not reviewing it here, am I? You're going to have to watch my wrap-up to see how I, how I get on with it. But um, yeah, haul. This is the haul, Dane. Remember that. Okay, haul. Greetings! I went to the charity shops in Marlow today. I was out with my mum and my granddad, and I bought a bunch of books. So I'm going to show you my latest sort of haul holly. Paul. So we have The Edible Woman by Margaret Atwood. Don't know what it's about, just Atwood is one of those authors who I'm sort of slowly but surely working my way through everything that she wrote. I have Henrik Ibsen, A Doll's House. So um, yeah, it says here he's the most influential dramatist since Shakespeare. And he's Norwegian. All I really know about him is that every time there's a quiz show, if there's a question of which Norwegian dramatist, blah blah blah, it's always Ibsen. So I want to read some Ibsen for the first time. I got The Boys from Brazil by Ira Levin, and um, I have uh, I have more Levin coming soon. So this is actually uh, imagining Joseph Mengele's nightmarish plot to restore the Third Reich, and Mengele was the uh, Nazi scientist in charge of a lot of the testing at Auschwitz, all the stuff like where they, you know, tortured one twin and not the other, and all of this stuff is fucked up. Here we have The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett, so um, classic uh, crime here, Sam Spade. Um, I know it's also been made into a sort of very successful film. I have read some Hammett before, but only one book. Um, the Maltese Falcon is his most well known. Over here we have A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson, so non-fiction writing, he does a lot of like sort of travel stuff. Um, so this is the about the Appalachian Trail, which will be interesting um, because somebody I work with for one of my clients, uh, this person called Corey Roop, uh, she lives in Appalachia and we, I interviewed her for my radio show and we were chatting about Appalachia, so it'll be interesting to learn a little bit more about the area. We have The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. So I know Charlie, Charles Heathcote, hated this book. However, we both did a buddy read of The Moonstone and we both enjoyed that. So I'm hoping I will enjoy this more than Charlie did. Here we have Murder in the Dark by Margaret Atwood. Short fictions and prose poems. Beautifully bizarre, lovely. We have Seneca on the shortness of life. Life is long if you know how to use it. 
uh, Penguin Books, great ideas. Seneca is a Stoic philosopher, and I find Stoicism very interesting. And I've read some Seneca in the past and really enjoyed his, his take on things. Here we have An Apology for Idlers by um, Robert Louis Stevenson. And this is actually part of the same series, I think. I don't know, this is Penguin Books, great ideas. Yeah. These are both Penguin Books, great ideas. But they are diff- oh okay, so this is number 76 in Great Ideas, and this is number 1 in The Great Ideas. Well, that's quite cool. I wonder if there's a box set of this. And then, we have some more Ira Levin, so we have A Kiss Before Dying. Don't really know too much about this one. Um, it earned him the 1954 Edgar Award for Best First Novel. And then we have, of course, The Stepford Wives, which is the one I particularly want to get to. Basically, I saw these three and they also had Rosemary's Baby. Um, but I, I read that earlier this year and so far it's my top book of the year. So that's why I wanted to get some more Ira Levin. And in particular, I have been looking for The Stepford Wives. Then we have this, which is Penguin Parallel Text, French Short Stories 1, Nouvelle Française, uh, edited by Pamela Lyon. And um, I'm going to read you the blurb here. Les huit nouvelles de ce recueil de Marcel Aimé, Alain Rob Grillet, Raymond Queno et d'autres auteurs français ont été choisis non seulement pour le mérite littéraire, mais aussi parce qu'elles reflètent les tendances de la nouvelle française au XXe siècle. Les traductions anglaises de textes parallèles ont visé l'exactitude plutôt que la valeur littéraire et sont accompagnées de notes. Okay, basically it's saying it's a French, French short, short story writers and it's basically presented so the French is on the left, the English on the right, um, which I find to be a really good way of, um, of, of learning. That's interesting, so I just flicked in. Pendant une journée, il faut presque en quarantaine, um, which actually means for a day he was close to quarantined and they've translated that as for a whole day he was practically sent to Coventry. And anyway, and then we have The Trials of Life by David Attenborough. Uh, David Attenborough, obviously famous naturalist. And I just really want to read all of all of his books. I've read a few already, so I try and pick them up whenever I see them. Especially because I don't really, I don't really see them go on sale online and stuff very often. So, uh, yeah, got that as well. Hello, denizens of the internet. I have a book for you that arrived in the post today. Navigators of Dune by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is book three of the Schools of Dune trilogy. And the final of the Dune series. So once I've read this, I've read them all, except for what I think is called The Road to Dune, um, which is a biography of Frank Herbert written by Brian that also I think includes a novella that isn't included anywhere else. So I'll probably get to that after this. And then Dune is ticked off. And then what's next? Like the Wheel of Time or something? I don't know. No, probably not. I'll finish the odd series first. All right, everybody. Well, it's actually the 2nd of June and I forgot to finish this. So uh, that's the end of my haul. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.